This video is going to show you how to apply what we know about the net electrostatic force in E fields to find the electric field at a point in space. To begin with, let's do a little reviewing. Here I have a negative particle and it's going to have an electric field. Everything with a charge has an electric field. The electric field is determined, the direction of the electric field is determined by the path a positive particle would take. So if there's a positive particle nearby, we can see by the field lines that it's going to be attracted to the negative particle, so it's going to go right to it. In this case, it looks like rays of sunshine. So let's pick a point, point in space. Just Here's our point in space. I want to figure out what the direction of the E field or what that E field actually is in that point in space due to that negative charge. So I know that if I put a positive charge at that point in space, it's going to be attracted to the negative charge. So the direction of the E field is e easy to determine. It's going to go down and to the left. Now to find the force of the, of the particle that would have been there, it's F is equal to QE. If I had a particle there, remember this is just an imaginary point in space and my charge particle Q1 that's also imaginary. So I know one way of describing the force is F is equal to QE and I can also use Coulomb's law to find it where I've got K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Q2 is the red negative charge, Q1 is that point in space that my, my imaginary positive charge and R is the distance between them. Now I'm not interested in the force but I can use these two formulas in order to find the E field at this point in space. So I'll set the two expressions for the force equal to each other. KQ1, Q2 over R squared is equal to Q1 times E. And when I do this, I can see that the Q1s divide out, leaving me with E is equal to K2 over R squared. Well, the Q2, that's the charge in the middle. That's the, the negative charge that we're interested in. Remember, Q1 is just imaginary. It's not really there, so that doesn't matter. In fact, it goes away from the expression completely. So my expression really, when it all is sifted out, it comes down to the E field is equal to KQ over R squared, where R is the distance between this point in space and the charge particle. K is still Coulomb's constant, and E is the electric field, measured in newtons per Coulomb. So let's look at an actual example. Here I've got two charges, C and B. C is positive, B is negative, and I want to find the E field, its magnitude and direction at this point in space. So the direction is determined by the definition of an electric field. The electric field shows the path a positive particle would take if we would put it in that point in space. So in this case, I can put my positive particle in that point in space, and I can see that due to the C particle, it's going to be repelled upwards. And if I put it back in that point in space, and I ignore what happens to C, and I look at B, I can see that the B particle is going to attract it, the positive particle. So that's going to help me to determine my directions of the electric field at that point in space. Now what I need to do is add them up to find magnitude and direction. So to find magnitude, I set up my formulas just like I did before. And this is all what we've done previously when we solved for the electric field. E is equal to KQ over R squared. So Coulomb's constant. My charge in this case, the electric field due to the C particle, so I use C particle's charge, divided by the distance squared between the point in space and the particle and that gave me my electric field of 383. Now due to the B particle, so Coulomb's law times the charge on the B particle, notice I didn't have a negative sign in my expression, it's all positive numbers because the negative sign was used to determine the direction of the E field, which we just did just by logic, it divided by the distance squared between the two uh, points and the particle. And now I've got an electric field due to B at a, of 100.58 newtons per Coulomb. Now I've got to combine these to get my answer to get magnitude and direction. So I'm going to make my little triangle. Here's the E field due to B and the E field due to C. And that makes my triangle. My hypotenuse is my net electric field and the angle is the angle down there by the tails of the vectors. So I use a little bit of geometry with the Pythagorean's theorem to find the net electric field and then I use a little bit of trig with a tangent to find the angle. Now if I look back to what we've done previously with the net electrostatic force, these two processes are very similar. So here I have two similar setups. One has particle A that I'm trying to find the net electrostatic force on, and one has this point in space on the right that I'm trying to find the E field. So here's a little Venn diagram to see how these two processes compare. If you want to, you take a moment and kind of go through this process that we've done. So here's my Venn diagram. Here are the steps for finding the net electrostatic force in that E field. So if I look at this in terms of a Venn diagram, I've listed out all the steps that we've gone through. And you can see how they're separated up into electric field and electric force. And these are the steps that they have in common. So 
So it's the same process as finding the net electrostatic force using Coulomb's law, except in the very beginning where we're finding direction and magnitude. Otherwise, it's an identical process, not something new.